Alright, so after playing with shock cannons in my last video, I thought it might be a good idea to demonstrate a better tuned version of a vulture that I had in storage. This guy I like to call the fire ant, and represents what I think is probably the near edge of what the vulture is capable of if you want to do a core PvE type ship. Now one of the things you have to keep in mind when you're doing PvE, especially in has reses and combat zones, is a factor known as loiter time. That's your ship's ability to remain in combat, actively engaged before um, it runs out of ammo, runs out of fuel, or sustains enough damage that it necessitates you leaving the area to go and get repairs. For combat zones, that's especially a, a big factor because if you leave the instance and you're alone, there's nobody there to hold the fight open for you, and when you jump back in, the entire thing would reset, and you won't be able to get any of the uh, any of the benefits to the BGS that drive a lot of uh, combat zone engagements, at least for the BGS people. Um, I tend to do combat zones because I enjoy combat zones, and I like the up-armored, uh, slightly more difficult variants of ships that you have to fight in those environments than you typically fight in a Hazrez. So, what goes into a really good, into this vulture build? Burst lasers, which I'd kind of poo-pooed on because I thought them to be the off-centered middle, the moderate weapon, let's say. Because you've got your pulse lasers that represent the peak of efficiency in the game for energy weapons. You've got your beam lasers that are generally thought of as being the thing that you use when you want to cook a target. But that's not true. If you're trying to do a pure energy build, I've recently discovered, and I'm sure there are other people in the Elite who know this, I'm just probably behind the curve. Burst lasers are incredibly versatile. They are better than beam lasers because of one simple experimental. This is my Coriolis build for the fire ant. This used to be beam lasers, but now I'm running 3D fixed burst lasers, short range grade 5, inertial impact. So a lot of engineering goes into this build. You'll notice I've got engineering symbols on everything else in here. There's probably some minor tweaking and fine-tuning I can do to get the resistances up, but I'm happy with how it performs, and I've kind of left it pretty much alone since I originally put beam lasers in. What I want you to take note of is the DPS. 54.6. This is a burst laser, so the capacitor draw that it inflicts per shot fired is a lot lower than a beam laser, and just to give you a good illustration of what I'm talking about, the previous beam laser setup I was running was grade 5 efficient because I couldn't get two beam lasers to run on this ship in parallel with anything less than efficient. The power draw was just too high. And then I was doing thermal shock because at the time I thought that that affected PvE combat. It turns out it doesn't. So if you're fighting other ships, trying to cook them out is literally pointless. You're just wasting time and you're taking a significant damage debuff. So you'll note even with grade 5 efficient thermal shock, 25 DPS with twin beam lasers. See, a lot of people try to play with beam lasers because they think they're cooler, but you're 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 missing out. Burst lasers have one critical advantage that I mentioned before: inertial impact. While it gets poo-pooed because of the three degrees of jitter it introduces, it gives you a huge damage buff and then converts half of your incoming damage to kinetic, effectively meaning that you're doing 50/50 of each damage archetype. That doesn't get you over the resistance hump the way that a plasma accelerator does, but it's a damn effective weapon. And because it's energy, you get the advantage of not being gimped by ammo. Although you don't get to uh, proc the damage bonuses that normally come from synthesis. So I'm just going to reset this page so I don't have to fiddle with the blueprints. Uh, that didn't work. All right, fine. I'll put this back together real quick just so that I can share it with other people and not confuse the heck out of them. So that's grade 5 short range and inertial impact. Now the reason I do short range is because inertial impact, the experimental, inflicts that 3 degrees of jitter. It's a little number, but it makes a huge impact on how the weapon functions. Let me demonstrate. Look at that thing squirrel all over the damn place. That squirreling effect builds up really fast to the point where if you try to fire in anything more than a couple kilometers, no, well, actually, anything more than a kilometer away, and it doesn't matter how accurate and on point your reticles are, you're going to have shots that are missing. 
which means that there's no reason at all to put blueprints like long range or focused on this thing because you're never going to get to take advantage of the massive range boost and you're probably going to increase the likelihood that you accidentally hit something that you're not trying to shoot at and get the requisite fines. So for this particular laser, about the only effective blueprints that I that I can imagine, I can show you actually, the only effective blueprints you should be considering for this type of first laser build is I highly recommend short range. Technically you can do overcharge, but I you're not even going to get to take advantage of its default three kilometers of maximum range. So I don't really see much point in using overcharged because you're also going to take a massive hit to your capacitor's draw. Short range has no impact to capacitor draw, but it does significantly increase thermal load. So you just got to be aware of that when you're firing. That can sometimes force you to pace yourself, especially when you're boosting all over the place. And that heat draw is one of the reasons why I'm breaking with the normal curve when it comes to combat ships and I have clean drives on this thing because I want to get that, that thermal load advantage so that when I'm boosting and maneuvering, I'm not building up a whole bunch of heat. And I opted for drive distributors because drag drives just adds heat and I wanted to keep that heat down as much as possible. Unfortunately, since my shields go down all the time, I put a 4A Guardian power plant in this thing because it gives you a lot more integrity, well, some more integrity over the stock 4A power plant, which can't power this build full stop. A stock 4A power plant's not going to cut it. You have to overcharge it. Even uh, reinforced reactors doesn't quite produce enough power to get you to get at least this build where it needs to be. I'm sure that there's some clutch shipbuilders out there who want to try to fiddle with this more in the background, and you're welcome to. I'll leave this ship build in the show notes. Um, I keep a 2A field maintenance unit in for my own um, self-assuredness, because when the shields pop, the vulture tends to get its canopy blown out, and that ruins your fun really fast. Guardian module reinforcement package, because it gives you more integrity than a standard package, and a balance of hull reinforcement packages to try to get those hull resistances as even as possible. It's not fully optimized, it's not trying to be fully optimized, it doesn't really need to be to be effective in a has res. And I don't recommend that you try to build a ship like this for PvP because this type of build is very much a time on target archetype. So, how does it perform? Don't bother with small ships. If you're doing any kind of bounty hunt to earn credits, small ships aren't really worth your time most of the time anyway. You'll want to be scanning for those juicy mediums and occasional larges. ASP exploders tend to be my go-to for demonstrating weapons, because for some reason even the NPCs outfit them like absolute shite. Kill warrant scanner, because I have one, and you want to get to within a half a kilometer to optimize your ability to put damage down. But even at a half a kilometer, you'll see some shots just squirrel out of the way. And look at that juicy hull damage. Granted, that's an ASP exploder and tends to be pretty easy to kill. Do oh, here we go, an anaconda. Pip management is a lot more unforgiving with energy-based builds. You do have to be on it. Oh, let me get that kill warrant scan. Okay, I got a ship launch fighter. You're probably never going to be able to hit a ship launch. Well, if you tried hard enough, you could, but it's not worth your time. Especially when you can see how much damage I'm absolutely wrecking this NPC shields. The trick is to keep the fight in close, but since this is an energy build, you're sacrificing some of your maneuverability in order to put damage down. You basically have to commit to keeping as many pips into weapons as possible. If you try to shunt them away into engines or shields during a fight, you've got some forgiveness. It takes about five or six bursts to drain your weapons capacitor, then you start going into alt fire which is where you don't quite have enough energy to put everything down and they just start alternating. At three pips you can sustain some damage out but you can see you keep your finger on the trigger you start overheating. 
fat finger the chaff button instead of the heat sink launcher. Even against more maneuverable ships, you tend to be able to put a lot of heat down. These Imperial ships almost never have the kind of armor that they can stand up to this. A couple weaknesses with the ship build to keep in mind. The system's capacitor takes a lot of crap, and you're going to be constantly fussing with it as you take shield damage, because this is equipped with biweaves for maximum shield regen. Biweaves are better in PvE combat because it lets you get your shields back up faster between engagements. They're not as good if you don't have engagement control. So if you're going into a really spicy combat zone, you probably want to think about prismatics. Yeah, they take longer to cycle back up if they get knocked out, but they tend to do better when you're getting attacked by multiple targets simultaneously. For general purpose bounty hunting and even for some of the assassination boards, this is a really good build. It's easy to use, it's forgiving for beginners who are learning how to aim, but the engineering requirements to make it work are high enough that you're probably going to be mid to late game before you have the resources to build the ship out the way I have it fitted on Coriolis. Anyway, um, loiter time's basically indefinite. If you're smart about combat, you can stick around almost as long as you want. Um, if your shields go down, it's a vulture, make sure to try to face your cannon people away from the people shooting at you, have a chaff launcher so that you can screw up their gimbals, and um, play around. This is probably the most effective configuration that, that I know of for burst lasers, at least for the vulture. Uh, there are other configurations that can work, it just comes down to what you're willing to put up with and the sacrifices you're willing to make. Good luck commanders, and do try to enjoy yourself. Dry heat out.